No Talk Connection. Welcome to the most extreme menage a trois violence you'll ever experience here on the Extreme Through a Dance. JT, Jenny, and Matt coming at you, reliving the history of ECW here week by week, show by show, moment by moment, blood by blood. We started in February 1994. We are now into the spring of 1999 on our journey. How are you both doing here tonight? Feeling extreme as always. Uh, hardcore and heavenly, as is customary Ooh. for what we're talking about here. Yeah, it is yet another hardcore heaven for us. Hardcore yeah. heaven, 1999. Well, it's been like almost a week since I podcasted, or maybe longer. I don't remember. Anyway, so, you know, y'all might have to carry me on this episode tonight. Mm -hmm. We got you. Carry you, to, carry you to heaven. Yeah, yeah. The, on the stairway. Right. Michael Landon. <laughs> Else? I feel like we did a bunch of heaven jokes. Yeah, we did. Time. We've done. We've exhausted these. <laughs> Probably. I'm sure. We're out of heaven jokes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, C.S. Lewis. Um, let's go ahead and run well, through tonight's show. It is pay per view week, and again, if you've never listened to us, welcome aboard. We've been doing all of the TV, some of the big arena events, and all the pay per views as we go through the history of ECW, because that's the kind of thing we do on this podcast network. This show is simulcast both on audio on any podcast application, video on YouTube. We're also across social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. A lot of cool content coming at you. Uh, you know, recently, of course, was Backlash France. So we we we've been doing some previewing of that. We had a ton of WrestleMania content. That's all evergreen. If you want to go back and check that out, doing some trivia shorts. So just subscribe. You won't miss a thing, and you'll continue to us with us on this journey until the end of Extreme. All right, we're in the Mid Hudson Civic Center in Poughkeepsie. Kind of a classic wrestling venue here in the northeast mm -hmm. the home of hardcore heaven joey styles is in the ring the crowd is hot he welcomes us in but before we even get going out comes chris candido and tammy lynn uh she's all done up in an evening gown but she looks completely baked out of her mind mm -hmm. uh, sure does. Yep. they arrogantly strutted uh, strut out they interrupt joey joey says there's still two and a half hours left until the main event but candido says the fans are here to see the greatest sex symbol and the hottest female in wrestling wrestling has become quick paced fast wrestling and he'll deliver that tonight he also has an insurance policy backing him up and he brings out the dudley boys who's uh make their way to the ring along with joel gertner they get booed bubba says no one will touch candido tonight we get some crack horror chance for tammy candido yep. says he get the policy because he needs a fair match with taz to beat him and anyone from new york they're all snakes in the grass so this will ensure that he won't get attacked from behind he's a man that satisfies the hottest woman in wrestling and he will be the newest ecw champion Taz's music hits. He marches out to a pop. The Dudleys beat him in the aisle, but Taz take them both out easily. Hops in the ring, and it looks like we're about to start the show with our main event, Jenny. What did you think of the way this uh, all unfolded here out of nowhere going into our main events uh, to open the show? It seemed to me that Chris Candido was very confused about uh, when he was actually supposed to be performing <laughs> in the ring. Um, they both looked really sweaty and gross, mm -hmm. if I'm being honest, and he just, it came across as kind of dumb and confused here. Not like, I don't know if he was supposed to be some sort of mastermind uh, with the Dudleys, but eh, I, I don't know. Not a great look. Um, Taz does Taz things. You know? I, I, I thought this was a real shaky intro to the pod, or to the show, Matt. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I don't know what the point of all this was. Um... Like you said, Tammy looked rough. Candido didn't look good either. So it's just, it, it's a weird way to start the show. So like, I don't know, just, it was surprising, which I guess is maybe what they were going for, but just a super weird way to start a pay-per-view. I think what it is, and we talked about this last episode a bit, I don't think there's a lot of faith in this match or in this feud. Mm -hmm. I think they kind of are out of like ideas for Taz at the moment. Mm -hmm. So in typical kind of Heyman fashion, it's like, let's kind of lean into the unpredictable weaknesses and make them strengths. Right. So if this is kind of a weak man event where no one really believes Candido has a chance to win, um, why not just like go kind of chaotic? Let's open the show with it, make things mm -hmm. feel crazy. We'll do a, a show line, a show long through line and mix things up. So I think that's why they did it. Honestly, I think they knew coming in, like Candido's is not a really credible char challenger at this point. Mm -hmm. um, there's no triple threat backing them up really. So I feel like they were just like, fuck it. Let's just get it over with and kind of move on and, and we'll mix things up a bit. Uh, as great as ECW's been in 1999, I think the one thing they're lacking is real 
like main event level. Yes. Uh, I, I should yes. say they have a lot of main eventers. World championship like few yeah. options yeah. is what they're missing because guys like Dreamer and Sam like why well, Sam has gone but Douglas like they're all world title guys but they're kind of like not past it they're just not in the title mix right now so all their yeah. establishment eventers are either doing other things and there's like no one at the level of believability that to take on Taz at this point besides Sabu and it's like how many times are you going to do Taz Sabu mm -hmm. so without that we're kind of stuck. There's like nobody else on, on the list right now, right? They're going to build some people up. So um, we'll see where that goes. But for now we have our main events uh, on paper. Our world championship match is going to open the show. Taz defending the ECW championship against Chris Candido. The bell sounds. Taz blocks a punch. He unloads a flurry. Chucks Candido with a release overhead German. Candido gets a boot up on a charge. He walks right into a head and arm Taz plex. Candido recovers with a power bomb. He goes up top and he misses a headbutt. Taz folds him with a T-bone and he finishes with the Taz mission. So just squash shitty. I mean, Candido is right. obviously cooked. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this is it for him. We'll see if he pops back up, but if he does, it can't be for much. I mean, this is, even this has felt like a dead cat bounce for him. Um, he's just kind of lingering here at the end, but uh, the Dudleys end up getting the ring. They hit Taz with 3D. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're setting something up maybe with the Dudleys and, and Taz later or, or in the future. Um, Candido's out. It's again, it's more ECW on the fly. So I went two stars. I just kind of gave it like the squash squash special because I thought the energy was there. The crowd was into it. And I'm fine with that without them going through like a perfunctory like six or seven minutes of mm -hmm. Taz, just, you know, Candido getting some false offense in. I mean, this this to me makes Taz look better. Sacrifice Candido, who's probably out the door anyway, and just kind of fill in dates and fill in spots. I wonder if they would have even brought him back if they didn't need someone just like to fill this pay-per-view. That's mm -hmm. that's my thought. That they only yeah. brought him back for this. Yeah, I mean, I went a star and a half on it. It was totally fine for what it was, just a squash. And uh, like you said, I, I think Candido is pretty much, at least for a while, I think he's done. But I think it just speaks to, like you were mentioning, the state of the uh, challengers for Taz right now. He just really doesn't have any. That He gets a minute and a half long title. The main event of the show yeah. for the world title is a minute and a half long. Kind of speaks to where uh, this whole world title uh division i guess is right now so yeah i mean it, it was an it was an uh an entertaining squash for sure but just a squash nonetheless so i went star and a half jenny yeah i just did the two i mean it was fine for what they did um kind of cool watching taz eat the 3d and not gonna lie i kind of enjoy that part but i also kind of hate the dudleys being inserted into <laughs> every part of ecw now no. um they seem to be the the gim the top gimmicks of of the of the group. Well, it's like they also we <clears throat> talked about the tag division is going to be kind of weird, right? right it's yeah. like yeah. Axel and Balls, pretty much, and that's it. Like, there's nothing else really in the way of challengers. So it's like what, they want to do other stuff. They've got to become a main event level act. It's just the whole roster's in a weird spot. This is where we're starting to see the pile up of like all the people they invested time in peeling off for these mm -hmm. WCW contracts and everything mm -hmm. else. Yep. It's kind of starting to add up now. It's like Funk. They put a lot of time into that feud. He vanished. Like Sid, I don't think they ever really committed to because I think they knew he wasn't really sticking around. Mm -hmm. Douglas seemed like he was on his last legs. They spent a shitload of time around him mm -hmm. in the fall. And then it was like Taz and Sabu, Taz and Sabu, Taz and Sabu. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, they seem hesitant to elevate RVD. It's like, I don't know why they're waiting to pull the trigger on him. Like he's a mm -hmm. guy that could build up probably to face Taz if they want to do like a super dream match and get, to get the belt onto RVD maybe. Yep. Um but beyond that, you know, they're trying to microwave Storm Incredible up the ladder, but that's taking a little bit of time. So they're just in flux where they have a lot of, like, old veteran dudes, and then they have a lot of, like, great young talent mm -hmm. that's just not ready yet. Incredible Storm, you know, Tajiri, Tanaka, Super Crazy. Like, these guys are all upper mid-card dudes right now. So they're just kind of missing that level in between, like when they had Raven, Stevie, you know, Taz, Sabu, Funk, Dreamer, dog, like they were all in the title mm -hmm. mix, you know. Now right. it's kind of that is like thinned out severely. Mm -hmm. What's the reason? Why can't we get wrestlers? Is just because WCW and what they're doing over there, or you know, is there I think the money's just getting thrown. I think it's just getting thrown yeah. around more and more. Like WCW is just desperately throwing guaranteed checks out. Mm -hmm. WF is hotter than it was in the mid '90s, and guys are just cashing in. I mean, and. I'm sure a little bit of the ECW lore is starting to wear a little thin probably for some of these guys too, right? They can only right. live off of the Cayman speeches for so long. Mm -hmm. I think it was the checks are bouncing and they're like, look, I'm only going to get one chance at a 
you know, six figure deal from WCW or whatever it is. Like, I'm just going to yeah. go now while I got my right. shot at it. Right. Um, and I think, I think the nitro, you know, is it three hours thunder raw? Is it two hours? Smackdown is on its mm -hmm. way. There's a lot more room on those rosters now too, than there mm -hmm. was in the mid nineties. So I think mm -hmm. guys are just hanging around that would have washed out before um, and come to ECW. So they're doing a good job replenishing. It's just not at the level they need to kind of make the main event. I think Taz has been booked so strong. Right. It's almost like it's the Goldberg conundrum in a way. It's like, you know, or, you know, we've seen this with, with other guys too. It's like, how do you book someone strong enough to take them out when they're, when they're set up to be so dominant? So, mm -hmm. all right. Cyrus is in the nest. He talks about the creative control and Joey says he has no character. It's just me. Cyrus says Joey's been jacking off for years, but now he can have intellectual intercourse with him. <laughs> Joey says his wife doesn't even let me flirt in the locker room. Cyrus says Joey doesn't have to be alone anymore. And he'll hold things together for him in the booth. We see Taz. He's wobbly. He's carried out. Just chaos. Um, the audio in the commentary is really low. It's hard to yes. hear. I yep. hated the audio on this show. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fucked up. I don't know if it's like that's just how it was mm -hmm. on the pay-per-view, on the tape, or the network. If they're trying to dub stuff out like Chance or something. So they lower. I, I don't know. But it, it is rough to hear like all night. Mm -hmm. Um, the Dudleys are in the ring. They're stomping around. Bubba says the fans may be confused, but what they're looking at are the six-time BCW Tag Team Champions, and they hacked up Sandman, which is a pretty funny mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Of course, Sandman is not on his hack yeah. at this point. Uh, they broke Beulah's neck. They split up the Eliminators. Saturn wears a dress. They beat Tanaka back to <laughs> Japan. They took Sabu and RVD, kicked their asses. And as that's going on, Cyrus tells Joe he's got a lot of heat with people. Uh, Bubba says he wants to fight the Dudleys. Uh, he wants to. He wants the Dudleys to fight. If anyone has the ball, anyone has the balls, they can come down to the ring. Uh, and of course, Big Balls fires up right away. Out comes Balls Mahoney with a chair, and there's a ref right behind him. So, uh, Jenny, we're kind of rolling into this more. This leaning into the chaos, right? The Dudleys are in the ring. Taz yep. is getting carried out. Yep. Now we're right into a singles match coming up here. That's going to be maybe become a tag match in a second. The whole thing's all mm -hmm. over the place. But what did you think of this? And Cyrus uh, popped in the booth. I don't like Cyrus in the booth. I would like for him to exit the booth immediately. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just, I don't. I, he's fine for what his role is. I do not need him on commentary. Um, it, it, I don't think he adds much. He's annoying. And they, him and Joey have no chemistry. So that's where I stand with Cyrus. Um, then the Dudleys cutting their promo. It just seemed spur of the moment and like they didn't know what else to do from this point so what the hell uh issued the challenge um also i was offended by the perry saturn in address comment <laughs> don't need to hear that i will not hear any bad words against perry saturn yeah i mean the promo itself was a fairly basic dudley stuff i did like the chaos of it all how it just feels like it's kind of off the cuff and chaotic mm -hmm. and like we don't know what's going to happen so like i i enjoyed that part of it the promo itself was fine i did like that the hack line like you mentioned but I, that was kind of my main takeaway was that i feel like they're trying to play up how chaotic it is right now because of the the main event going on first yeah. so I, I like how they did that but yeah, other than that, I mean, it was fairly basic stuff out of the Dudleys. It's just going to be too, like, I mean, I feel like we've had multiple pay-per-views that have affected by this shit. Like, Guilty as Charged yeah. was our last show, yep. and mm -hmm. that had Heyman in the beginning, right? Like, yep. we got to change the format. Mm -hmm. It seems like we're constantly... It's tough, because they're taping some of these shows in advance. Guys are bailing, they're pulling out, they're getting hurt. It's just like, you know, we're always changing these cards up. But that said, they're still delivering, because they have the talent to just roll out Okay, yeah. well, let's throw this match out instead. It'll still be mm -hmm. great. So, um, all right. So, Balls is throwing punches at both Dudleys. Uh, he goes to the eyes. He slams Bubba, goes up top with an elbow to the hip. Devon comes in. Uh, Balls hits him with a belly to belly, goes up again. The champs block him and slam him down. Now, Highway to Hell fires out. Out comes Spike. So, this now becomes a tag Yay! match. Yeah, Spike Dudley, Balls Mahoney taking on the Dudley boys. Spike goes low. He gets stereo, acid drop, and nutcracker sweet. Sign guy pulls the ref out. Balls throw Spike into Sign Guy and Gertner, but the Dullies attack him. Spike returns, and the Dullies throw him over the top into the railing with a Oof. double follow-away slam that was just nasty. Balls hammers away at the champs. They spill outside. Devon and Balls trade shots where Bubba throws Spike back in the ring. He beats on him there. Spike keeps staying alive, but Bubba sets up a table. He knocks Spike onto it. Bubba goes up top as Joey asks Cyrus if formats are like this in other promotions, too. Spike goes low on Bubba. He follows up, but Bubba recovers, but Spike through the table with a powerbomb. 
Back inside, Devon gets a soft drop on Balls. And then the champs hit the 3D on Spike, but Balls makes a save with a chair shot. Sign guy gets to the ring, but Balls catches him and backs him down. Gertner lays in a weak chair shot on Balls and prances around. And then he tries to throw a fireball, but he gets fucked up. So Balls digs into his pocket. He drinks some lighter fluid and blows fire in Gertner's face. He pretty much misses, but they play it like he hits it. <laughs> uh, Balls turns into a 3D and the champs retain. Uh, so this is fine. It kind of continues the chaotic structure. Spike took some crazy bumps. Balls comes up short. A fire spot was cool, even though they kind of whiffed. Um, it's typical ECW where things are kind of awkward and botchy, but the crowd loves mm -hmm. it anyway. So I went two and a half, Johnny, on the match. I mean, it's, it's whatever, standard fare. We're still in the Balls versus Dudley's era here that doesn't seem to ever be ending. Nope. Uh, we got Fire in the mix. We got Spike in the mix. Seems like maybe Axel. I don't know if he's gone because Axel and Balls lost, you know, Right, they can't team anymore or whatever, but I don't know if we're ever going to see that match. I don't, I don't know what's going on <laughs> uh, with all this stuff. We're definitely all over the place. Yeah. Um, what would you think? Yeah, this is chaos, but I mean, it's always fun to watch Spike bump around. I mean, he really ate some shit during this match. Uh, that rough spot um, from in, into the guardrail uh, just basically threw him straight and over and into it. It was awful. Um, also, I hate Cyrus with Joey. I don't know if uh, I mentioned that before, but he actively makes it worse uh, during this match. I don't like him at all. Um, the Bubba Bomb um, to spike off the top through the table is really cool. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> Joel with that comically weak chair shot was pretty funny. <laughs> um and then he he was <laughs> mm -hmm. he would light a match and just throw it, light it and throw it. It was pretty funny. And um, then I liked the little jet fireball, even though it did miss the mark a little bit. It still looked cool. So I did two and one quarter stars in this one, Matt. I went uh, I went two and three quarters on this. I, I, I thought it was fun as hell for what it was. I mean, it was you know it was under ten minutes. It was just a wild brawl. I thought Gertner was fantastic during this with him throwing the matches at him and then eating shit on the fireball. The fireball looked great. It did whiff completely, but it still looked pretty <laughs> fucking cool. So I'll uh, I'll give it uh, points for that. So yeah, I just thought it was a, a. I mean, it was again very chaotic, which has been the theme of the so far of this pay per view, but. I enjoyed it for what it was, so I went. Uh, I went to, and they have good chemistry with each other. Too. Oh, they yeah, do. They, to me, yeah. it's just like I'm. I'm. I'm just done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm kind, I'm kind of, of where I was with like Public Enemy at the end. I'm just like, all right. Yeah. Like, See, I, I think for me, it was the fireball that kind of bumped it. Yeah, up. I mean, at yeah, least they're trying. Right, right. They're, they're trying to do yeah. some different stuff, so I think that gave it a bit of a push for me. But I mean, ultimately, it is the same match we've seen out of these teams. But I still went two and three quarter on it. So. The thing with Cyrus, too, is the mileage is going to vary, right? Like, he's the very th – there's a lot of this in 99 that's, like, the insider, mm. internet, cool, like, lingo, like, shoot lingo. Oh, you get a lot of heat ripping up the format, right? Like, we had Mark Madden doing it in WCW. Yep. Um, we didn't really get into a WF just yet. I think we get a little bit later with, like, like Cornette do a little bit of it. Um, yeah. Like, Jarrett does some of it. Um, so, it's like there's some of it in there, but – uh, it's mainly like Madden is like the big one in WCW and then Cyrus mm -hmm. here. It's like a lot of the insider lingo, but I guess Russo in WF. I mean, that's where it was happening. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. All right. We get our opening animation like an hour into the show here. <laughs> right. And then we go to the ring where Super Crazy takes on Takamishinoku. Super crazy hits the ring. Joey runs out his resume, makes the usual joke about the WF creative team not knowing what to do with him. Taka follows, and this has some banger potential. Joey runs through his stats. Cyrus uh, talks about taking Taka under his wing back in the WF and says Taka now has a lot of heat with people for his actions. Taka drives super crazy to the floor. We reset. Back in the ring, Taka works the back. Crazy counters into an arm bar, gets a leaping DDT to send Taka bailing out. Crazy tries to springboard. Taka slugs him back down. Taka hits a low drop kick as Cyrus says Taka used to wear a Zodiac light heavyweight title everywhere he went. Taka keeps kicking away a crazy, chops away, hooks in a sleeper. He breaks out with a Russian leg sweep and stomps away, gets a tornado DDT. Tries a second one, but Crazy counters it into a powerbomb. Crazy heads up top, but Taka meets him with a punch and a springboard Rana for two. We get a quick flurry of pin attempts from both into a Taka backdrop that sends Crazy flying high to the floor at a big bump. Taka whiffs on a springboard plancha, bangs into the railing, and then Crazy drop kicks him off the apron into the fans. Crazy flies into it with a wild springboard acai. Back inside, Crazy works the knee. Taka comes back and slams him down. Crazy dodges the moonsault. It's a triple moonsault for a near fall. 
Crazy comes back off the top, but Taka meets it with a drop kick, and then it's a missile drop kick. Taka hits a Michinoku driver, but can't cover due to his knee. Crazy gets a tornado DDT, a power bomb to counter Arana, and hits a splash mountain bomb for the win. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, Crazy's amazing. He showed off all match, mm -hmm. talk writing together in between. He's been a great addition uh, to this little pairing here in the mid card. He brings some credibility as well. And he really is cool getting to see him open it up because obviously he didn't always get the chance at the WWF. Uh, so a great pay per view match. This mid card is crushing it where the main event's lacking, like we've been talking about all night. So uh, Matt with three and a half on this, you know, continues to be a welcome addition to the shows. I'm right there with you. Uh, three and a half on this crazy is just such a great addition to this mid card. I will say, you know, we've a lot of the stuff in this match we've seen before. And it kind of, again, I think I mentioned this on the last episode. We need to see crazy do more than just these international showcase matches at this point. Mm -hmm. He needs a storyline as great as these matches are like he, he needs to be doing more. He's just too talented to just be, you know, right. having doing him like random dream matches. Or whatever. Right. But it's an awesome match. So, um, yeah, just great. The finish is great. The power bomb was great. All the DDTs and moonsaults, just fantastic stuff. So, uh, yeah, three and a half for me, Jenny. Uh, same, same for me, you guys. Three and a half. Also, I meant to mention this earlier. We have a ramp to the ring, which I love, mm -hmm. and we don't get that a whole lot in ECW, but I like it when we do. Um, yeah, this was this was like different than I expected. Not as fast paced as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. It it actually felt more power movie than it did anything else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you focused on the leg, he did the dragon screw, and he was like really doing the limb work in this match. Um, so I was impressed by that and surprised by sort of the way that they worked it. Um, they're both amazing. A lot of attitude from Taka in this as well. Like, he... I mean, he's so scrappy. He really, <laughs> he really brings it in every match. Mm -hmm. um, and even though we uh, have seen this kind of his style before, I really liked, I really liked their chemistry in this match, and um, I was pleasantly surprised by it. Three and a half. Agreed. All right, Joey's in the nest. He hypes up Rob Van Dam versus Jerry Lynn. Backstage, Gertner is writhing in pain. The Dudleys are reviewing some papers he had, and they tell him they tell him to shut up so they can focus. And they see it's a hit list, and they see Nova's on it, so they go off to deal with him while Sign Guy is tending to Joel. The Dudleys find Nova. They kick the shit out of him, saying, "We don't know why, but the list said to do it." So we'll see oh, how Lord. this rolls on as the Dudleys <laughs> uh, hit list. See now, these are, these are the kind of things I've been wanting, kind of during the shows, like. Not filler, but like little um, scenes or whatever, and yeah. the kind of stories, but not with the Dudleys and not with the list. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. Like, I don't know. It's kind of funny, like them just having a random list from Joel that they find. They don't know how to read a list. That's true. It's true. They probably don't know how to read it. And then, but, you yeah. know, poor Joel. He's all burnt to shit. So. He got Gonna barely like singed. He got barely singed by that fireball, and now he's in <laughs> agony. <laughs> All right. With that said, we're going to go ahead and head right back to the ring, and our next match continues. Kind of that mid card, um, high energy wrestling, and I guess showcase matches, like you said, Matt. Mm -hmm. As Yoshihiro Tajiri is back with us, not fighting super crazy for once. Instead, <laughs> he's been like our good buddy, little Guido. <laughs> Of course, it's time for the Italian lesson of the week. The Italian tradition of the week, as some like to refer to us now, nowadays. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to head toward the culinary world here tonight on the Ooh, show. A fave. Wow. And we're going to talk about Spezzatino di Vitellio. I'm not even going to attempt it. Good God. Say it again. Spezzatino <laughs> di Vitello con Pacelli. What he said. I had nothing. All right, so it's essentially it's veal a... with peas soup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, veal, veal stew with peas. with peas. Yes, so it's a veal stew with peas. Uh, growing up for me, my grandmother would make it with uh, what's called like an egg drop. Have you ever had like egg drop soup? It's like another mm -hmm. kind of Italian soup. Uh, I think that's Spaza. The fuck it, I forget what I call that one. But. Um, Spezzatino, maybe it's the same, similar. Um, so 
anyway, the idea is it's uh it's like a red gravy, if you're in Italy, uh, sauce, and it's got uh, veal stew, it's got peas, and then if you want to put the egg, like an egg, uh, fully cooked, hard boiled, and put like the yolk in there, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. But peas are the only vegetable in the stew. Yeah, I mean, look. Hmm. Many Italians will put whatever the fuck they want and everything. Um, but yes, yes. The idea of the recipe is generally a uh, bunch of veal, mm. some peas, make your own sauce, and then do the egg drop along with it. Hmm. I recommend trying it. It's delicious. I've never been a veal so. eater. Um, uh, it's good know. if it's made right. It's so yeah. tender. But um, this specifically is definitely like a. The more I examined my childhood, what I ate, and why I have crippling acid reflux. But mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. anyway, it was really good. I ate a lot of it growing up. It was all natural and homemade, though. My grandmother made everything from scratch. So and that uh, acid reflux is all natural too, apparently. Yep. Yeah, it's all You're right. It's just all the acid homemade acid reflux bubbling down mm-hmm. there. Um, yeah. But I recommend. There are other things that are made with the egg drop in it, egg drop soup. But um, I always liked it with that variety. So. Recommend to try it if you haven't had it before. Spizzatino. All right, All right little Guido. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm going to need you to write down that name for me if I'm going to try it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because well, I ain't going to remember both to try it. And uh, let me know. Report back next episode. You got it. it. <laughs> All right, little Guido rides out on the shoulders of Big Sal the Graziano for our next match. Sal fucks with the ring announcer. They settle in to Jerry heads to the ring for his rematch from March. Joey says, Guido's been saddled by comedic partners and he wants some respect. So Jerry and uh, Guido bark at each other. They try and bait each other into a little bit. Joey and Cyrus continue to bicker. Ugh. Cyrus, Cyrus says Joey believes his own press. Kind of gets him revved up about it. So Jerry lands a hard kick to start. Guido takes him down, lands in some hard air slaps into some amateur work on the mat. Joey's already had it with Cyrus here. So Jerry takes over and works the leg. So Jerry kicks away, but Guido strikes back and knocks him to the corner. Guido stomps away. Cyrus says Japanese wrestlers aren't great street fighters. Guido hooks an armbar, heads up top. It's a missile drop kick to knock Tajiri to the floor. Guido follows with Pescado, but Tajiri sidesteps and he swipes him down to the mat below. Tajiri goes up top. He flies into Guido and Sal with a dive. Tajiri suplexes Guido on the railing and drop kicks him off of it. Back on the apron, Tajiri gets a tarantula. Guido slumps out and storms back with kicks. Tajiri counters with a leapfrog, sends him flying over the top into the ramp. Tajiri follows, but Guido takes him down with a drop toe hold, gets a springboard leg drop. Cyrus says he's happy to be on the creative team, but Joey says they don't have one. Guido gets back to work in the ring. He gets two on a springboard splash. Tajiri tries a blind cross body. Guido dodges and takes him to Fujiwara. Guido releases. He ties up the ref. The Sal comes in. It's a power slam for a great near fall. Guido twists into a hammerlock and grinds away. He shoves Tajiri to the floor. Sal lays the wood. Back inside, Guido continues to pepper away and go for covers, including a near fall and a power bomb. Tajiri blocks the crab and lands a pair of low drop kicks. Guido gets a full Nelson into a takedown and a cross arm breaker. Tajiri counters for dragon suplex with an airplane spin. Tajiri gets a brutal slap. He puts Guido in the tree of woe and murders him with a baseball slide. Tajiri knocks Sal off the apron, lands a head kick and a brain buster, and defeats Guido to win the match, which was very good. It was stiff. It was hard hitting. Blended mat work and strike work nicely. These guys have a very smooth, effortless chemistry. They keep chugging along. Uh, Tajiri gets a clean win, but Guido's elevating his confidence, elevating his credibility with each of these matches. Uh, so, Janet, those are very strong. I like to finish a lot. I went three and a quarter. Yeah, I went three and a half on this. Mm-hmm. I was really won over by Tajiri and Lil Guido, if we're being honest. Uh, great chemistry. Um, they're similar size, so I think that helps with that sometimes. Um, but, yeah, this was just, like, really fun from like kind of messy mat wrestling the strikes like you said um the awesome reversal of the sunset flip by tajiri was so cool looking and it felt like a real scrappy fight between two dudes like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and i like sal sneaking in where he can you know 600 pounds uh, all 600 pounds of him sneaking in when he can um to to do some damage and he he does some damage uh, I love the finish and the little sprint uh, towards the end. So it's a great match, Maddie. Yeah, I, I went three and a half on this too. Just really fun stuff. Um, 
both guys can work with, I think, everybody at this point. Tajiri's just, I, I say it every fucking episode. I'm going to keep saying it every fucking episode. Tajiri is so good. Like, good God. Just put him in there with anybody and he can have a banger, I think. There was that uh, airplane something he hit near the end of the match. I don't know what the fuck it was. He, like, basically has Guido on his back and he does, like, an airplane spin with him. It was like, yeah, it was, it was like cool. he was, like, wearing him as a backpack almost. It was fantastic. So, yeah, uh, three and a half for me on this. Just uh, the brain buster Tajiri hit at the end of it was just fantastic. So uh, Tajiri's another one. I want to see him do more with like crazy, like throw him in there with a feud. Like you're giving Guido this feud where he's like running the FBI. Now just give Tajiri something like that. Hell pair him with crazy, make him a tag team at this point. Like why not <laughs> at this point? So yeah. Uh, awesome stuff here. I went three and a half on it. I like that tag team idea. Yeah. No. Agreed. We'll see if they develop and continue to feud. And I think Guido's been a good mix of this burgeoning mm -hmm. mid-card mm -hmm. talent, getting him out of the comedy stuff. Surprisingly stuff, so. so, yeah. All right. Backstage, you're done. These are reviewing their hit list. Uh, poor Rugged Rod Price is on there. Oh, no. Good Not cut. Rugged Rod. Rambling man. Bubba's confused. He says, we like Rod. But Devon says he's got three dollars. <laughs> it says otherwise. And Bubba says, all right. Bubba. Okay. They go off searching. They look at various rocker rooms. They find poor Rod, who's so happy to see them. He's like, what's up, guys? And they get out of them. They say it's business, not personal. And Bubba says the list isn't done just yet. So I thought this one was pretty funny, uh, mainly because of Rod just being so earnestly happy to see these guys, his friends. Yes. And they just say, like, yep, sorry. I'm just going to kick the shit out of you instead. They did hesitate, but but we like him. Well, whatever. It well, is what it is. And then smashes him in the face of the fucking chair. Like, Rod oh Price. Rod and Price still getting a paycheck, too, is unbelievable. <laughs> still hanging around. Just randomly showing up on a fucking pay-per-view out of nowhere. <laughs> Just to get his He's ass man. backstage yeah. by the Dudleys. Um, and they're screaming, nothing personal, brother, as they're stomping <laughs> him in the ground. So, yeah, it was kind of funny. Well. We'll see if uh, Rugged Rod or anyone else get there. Uh, <laughs> come up and see her at the Dudleys. Um, all right, let's roll on. Back to the ring we go for our next match. Is Tommy Dreamer is here to take on Lance Storm, who's in street clothes. Him and uh, his bitch head to the ring, ready for a fight. There are weapons all over there. Joey says, bitch has her hair dyed in plastic surgery just to look like Beulah, which I don't know. I feel like uh, they're trying a little too hard at this. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I don't quite see that much of a resemblance. Uh, Tommy's out to a big pop. He's angry, focused. He brings out Francine. Storm beats, uh, meets Tommy on the ramp. They start throwing down. Tommy chucks Storm off yeah. the ramp and batters him around ringside. In the ring, Storm ducks a trash can lid shot, tries a sunset flip. Tommy bashes him with the lid and sends things back outside with a cactus clothesline. Tommy shoots Storm into the steps, pelts him with a water bottle, does an airplane spin on the ramp. Storm slips down with a slop drop, drops some elbows, and heads back in the ring where he counters the DDT into a back heel trip. Storm jams a chair between the buckles and slugs away. The dodges his Piccoli driver, nails a super kick. Storm sets up a table at ringside. Tommy follows him out and slugs away, crotches him on the post. Tommy puts a piece of the guardrail on the ring but misses a chair shot, and Storm crotches Tommy in the railing. Storm goes up top. Tommy dodges and bangs off the rail. Tommy sets up a chair, and he spikes Storm on it, and it goes up top, but Storm blocks and slams him onto the chair for two. Storm fires away, tries to hip toss Tommy off the, uh, out through the table, but Tommy blocks and backdrops Storm over the top through it and said to a pop. Tommy shoves Storm back inside. He follows uh, and follows, but Storm meets him with the edge of a chair to the eye. Storm beats Tommy with his belt and then grinds the buckle into the eye wound, which looks pretty nasty. Tommy fights back and hits Storm with a stunner while holding a chair to his throat. That gets a near fall. Tommy sets up a ladder bridge and tries a bulldog, but Storm shoves Tommy off the apron onto the ladder, hits him with a trash can lid. Tommy dodges the baseball side and nails Storm with the ladder. Back in the ring, Tommy puts the ladder on Storm's neck and runs it into the post and then hits the ladder with a chair. Storm collapses into the ref and Tommy puts on the ladder. Goes up top and misses a frog splash. He bangs off the steel. Storm grabs another table, puts the bloody Tommy on it, heads up top. Tommy stops him, follows up, takes him through the table with a super Spicoli driver to a massive pop. Tommy covers, but the ref is out. In comes Cyrus and Francine meets him with a spear and a Bronco Buster. <laughs> bitch is in we get a cat fight but tommy grabs her finally crushes her with a pile driver as the crowd is losing it storm smacks Tommy with a trash can puts it on his head and barrels into him with a top rope spin kick for the win joey knows that louis spicoli's wife was here tonight as a guest and he's waiting for someone in the dirty to steal a spicoli driver storm carries bitch to the back as tommy crawls down the ramp in pain 
So I thought it was a great brawl. I think you could feel the hate and the pain. It didn't meander or get silly. It was grounded. It felt like a fight. They kept it tight. The crowd was into it. It was dialed into the match of the feud. Storm's been amazing. Uh, he hung in with Tommy in this garbage shedding, and, and he gets his uh, Tommy gets a little bit of revenge on bitch for all the stuff she's doing to Beulah. But Storm wins the war on this night. So uh, Matt went three and a half. I this is really good. It brought back some vintage Tommy, and I thought Storm in the setting uh, was really cool, and it shows that he's become like an ace that can kind of go however you want it to go. I went three and three quarter on this. I really enjoyed this, and my, that was my big takeaway too, like you mentioned about Storm, just how well he was able to hold his own in this type of match. And it's not necessarily that I doubt doubted that he'd be able to. It was just cool to see that, oh, he's a guy, he's a great wrestler, but he can also beat the shit out of you, too, in a, ma- in a garbage, hardcore style of match, too. So I enjoyed that. Just a lot of great spots, too, in this. Uh, the finish I thought was great with the the, uh, the spin kick off the top rope with the trash can. That was really well done. The ladder stuff was great. The spots with Bitch I thought were all really well done. The crowd was red hot by the end of this. So, yeah, I mean, I was expecting this to be a really good match, but I didn't think it would be this good. And uh, I think Lance Storm is like, you know, we were talking earlier about we need bodies for Taz to face. At this point, I don't think it's out of the question to say, why not Lance Storm? do Taz and Landstorm for, you know, at the next pay-per-view or whatever. I mean, he just beat, he just beat Tommy Dreamer. So, I mean, but I feel like part of it is they don't, I think when they're stuck with the credible challengers, it's less like they have guys that could be credible, but they don't want them to lose. (laughs) So they're they're kind of stuck where it's like Taz is going to kill him probably, but Mm. they're not ready to do that to Storm yet because they spent so much time building him up to be more than just a one-time challenger to Taz that gets waxed. Right. So, Mm. You're kind of there with Credible and Storm. That's where they're at. And then no one else is really at the level. So it's like, what are we doing with Taz? So he's he's kind of a man without a feud right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, awesome match, Jenny. Three and three quarter for me. <coughs> I was a little bit lower on it. Uh, three and a quarter. I don't know why. I mean, I know why. Because I, don't, I didn't want Lance Storm to win. And mm-hmm. he won. So I hated the finish. But I did love the hot start on the ramp. Um, and all the weapons, the guardrails, a personal favorite of mine, especially when Tommy mm-hmm. puts it in the ring. Um, cool table spots, um, cool, fun ladder work by Tommy. Yeah, this was like a really fun brawl between these two, and they do hate each other. And the <laughs> the pile driver on Beulah was great, or <laughs> Beulah bitch was great. So the crowd went nuts for that, as they should. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I get, I get the whole Lance Storm thing. I just, I feel like in a match like this, Tommy should win, but that's how I feel. Um, why not Tommy? Yeah, he doesn't need to. Well, you could do that. I mean, Tommy yeah. doesn't need to win this. That's, that's a good point. Yeah, you, yeah. you could do Tommy Taz as a throwaway. Um, yeah, it's a match that hasn't really been done a ton. So maybe just once or twice, I think. No. The, uh, the one thing I'll give him credit for, it's something we've criticized a lot, right? Is when they have these blood feuds, but they start, like standing in the ring with slow entrances. Yep. Remember yeah, we yeah, bitched yeah. about this a lot with Tommy yeah. in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they like start working red, like fucking arm holes and shit. But this, like they went right into it, which right, I love. Right into mm-hmm. that. Yeah, yep. I love that too. Yeah. All right. We head backstage again. The Dudleys are there. Uh, they talk about beating up poor Rod Price. They check the <laughs> list and now Jack Victory's on it. Oh, and they say, shit. Victory's our boy. We were, he was with us in New Orleans. They had our, he had our backs and we broke Beulah's neck. They're at a loss, but they find out the payoff for this one. It's five thousand dollars. So Bubba says, "Poor Victory is a dead man." Bubba and Sign Guy high five as Devon rustles up Victory from the bathroom. He's like, "Come on, man! I gotta get in there." He's like, "All right, all right, I'm on my way." <laughs> so out comes forward Victory. He dabs up Devon, and then Bubba nails him from behind, and they beat on him with chair shots. Uh, poor Jack. Um, but Boy, they're like rolling. Still they're over. rolling out all the scrubs for this, huh? Yeah, they are. Where's like, uh, who where's Hack beat up Myers Jack Victory and or... Rod Price? Like, wh- who's putting yeah. bounties on Rod Price? You know, really? Um, Joel, he's dumb. I, I, uh, well, someone's paying him. Yeah, <laughs> true. I guess so, I probably going to be Mustafa again. No, yeah, let's hope not. I guess if you're a fellow heel like Victory or Price, you kind of appreciate you appreciate it. You're like, all right, I got my ass mm-hmm. kicked, but I know, I know, was, I would have done the same thing, you know. Um, <laughs> But I just like he's like taking a shit. And Devon's like, let's go. I need the bathroom. Yeah. Should've they found creative that. ways to. These could have been like kind of lame, but they found creative ways to make mm-hmm. them entertaining. They're they're borderline lame. Like they're just 
barely yeah, it's cheesy enough that they're working yeah i will say i do think there was probably uh, a few too many of them like maybe yeah. one less would have been great but mm -hmm. well i'm guessing again that they for whatever reason like they just fill in time with some of the stuff right so yeah. i think it's oh, uh, totally. well we know why but i, I think yeah. so these are just like they probably came up with them on the fly like all right we just yeah. gotta eat up yep. 15 minutes or 10 minutes of tv time back that we're gonna have short so here just do this shit all right, see him praise Zach here. He's backstage with Taz. Taz has ice on his neck. He says he's the one that can take out the Dudleys, and he'll take them out tonight, not the next pay-per-view, some arena show or some Monday night. It goes down tonight because they messed with the wrong man. They can go ask Candido what he's about. And tonight, he'll make Bubba and Devon tap. Taz says praise Zach uses catchphrase, and then backs him down, and he does it himself. <laughs> so pretty standard Taz promo. Yep. Punk it yeah. all praise Zach. <laughs> <laughs> He had it coming. As usual. Yeah. All right, Joey's in the nest. He recaps tonight. And we go back to the ring. Our big, well-hyped rematch with the TV titles on the line as Rob Van Dam defends against Jerry Lynn. Lynn takes, can he take the belt? Can he take away the Mr. Pay-Per-View moniker that he's trying to take? Lynn hits the ring. He followed by RVD and Fonzie to Big Pop. We get the intros. The buzz is rising. Joey talks about Fonzie's ECW magazine column. Runs down the resumes of everyone. Reminds us that Sabu is banned from the arena by the New York State Athletic Commission. We eased in with some chain work. We feel out some resets, all done crisply at a crazy pace of the pop. The crowd is engaged. Things ramp up with more back and forth and counters leading to an RVD back elbow and a monkey flip, but RVD's eye gets sliced open. Fonzie barks about not stopping the match. RVD heats up with some strikes. Lynn dodges the drop kick, knocks RVD to the apron, knocks him to the floor with a springboard drop kick. Lynn heads up top. He beats RVD with a cross body. RVD climbs up to the apron, but Lynn smashes him with a drop kick and he gains he leg drop for two. Fonzie's ranting nonstop as Lynn chops away, puts RVD up top, and bulldogs him to the mat for two. Lynn gets crotched on top. Fonzie holds up the chair. Lynn dodges a Van Daminator, smacks Fonzie with the chair, and nails RVD. RVD crotches him again, hits a spin kick that knocks Lynn to the floor. He looks to smash his face brutally when he lands between the mats. Just a nasty mm -hmm. fall for Lynn. Mm -hmm. Lynn is very slow to get up. RVD buys him some time. He's preening around the ring. The ref is checking on Lynn. RVD slowly picks him up and deadlifts him in the ring. Lynn is bleeding. He looks out of it. Lynn slides back outside. RVD chucks him over the railing. Fonzie wants the match stop. RVD gets to the ring. He's soaking up the cheers. Lynn sinks into a seat in the front row. RVD slides out, sprints over the dives into the railing. Lynn recovers and drop kicks RVD back to ringside. They get back in the ring. RVD stomping away and hammering away at Lynn. Lynn gets a sunset flip for two, follows a pile driver attempt. RVD counters that to an Alabama slam, follows a sweet sliding heel kick but whiffs on a rolling thunder. RVD puts Lynn on the top rope. Lynn tries a tornado DDT, but RVD counters it to Northern Lights. RVD puts Lynn up top again. Lynn punches back. It's a sunset flip powerbomb. Lynn cracks RVD with a clothesline. He rolls out and grabs a table. RVD meets him out there, but Lynn shoots him into the steel. RVD throws Lynn into the crowd again. Fonzie throws a chair at him. RVD meets him with a Van Daminator off the railing. They head back to rinks, uh, back to the apron. RVD goes up top again. Lynn stops him. RVD fights him off and just dumps him off the top to the timekeeper's table. Lynn is out bleeding heavily as RVD heads out and hangs him on the railing. Kareen's into him with a leg drop off the apron. RVD gets back in the ring for two. Lynn tries to uh, tornado DDT again, but RVD shoves him off to the mat. Follows a slingshot leg drop for two. Lynn recovers. He takes RVD off the apron through the table with a sunset flip powerbomb to finally get a big strike. He stomps away. Throws RVD back to the ring for a near fall. Lynn uh, kicks away but eats a boot on a charge. RVD dodges a chair shot. Lynn chucks it into Fonzie's face. Gets two on a bridging German. He scoops up RVD, slams him, and heads up top. RVD catches him with a drop kick, puts a chair on the mat. Heads up top. They jostle. They slip, and they both fall hard to the mat. RVD rolls over for two. Lynn gets a Van Daminator for two. We get a sloppy pin attempt to counter flurry from both guys. They're clearly exhausted, which actually kind of made it feel more real that they were you know, not able to pull mm -hmm. this together. RVD knocks Lynn off the top rope. He hits a split-legged moonsault for two. We get more counters into RVD leg drop. He heads back up top, hits a five-star frog splash. As he's covering, Lynn rolls through, gets an awesome near fall. Fonzie recovers. He gives RVD a chair. He cracks the Van Daminator and gets a massive monster five-star frog splash to win and retain. So this is a brutal match. Um, mm. Definitely a bit slower than you'd expect, but the nasty bumps and spots made it work well. Lynn's concrete bump and bleeding was disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, he was clearly out of it for a bit. I thought they might call the match right there. Mm -hmm. yep. The spots um, just all connected on this one. Uh, the crowd was great. They were really into RVD. Lynn took a shit kicking, but he looked strong. Did not give up. He hung in despite the beating. 
are really long but never dragged. It, like I, I thought it kept moving. Just a fight between two guys that have great chemistry and feel for what's going on. RVDs just feels unbeatable, but not in the same way Taz does. Like it feels like you have to take a lot to beat RVD, but these matches are all competitive and back and forth, and it feels mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. Like these guys, these athletic guys feel like they can get close to RVD, close to RVD, but yeah. he just outlasts them because he's so right. good. So I feel like he has credible good challengers. Uh, Lean gets close again. He can't close the deal. Jenny, I went, I went forward a quarter. I, I thought this was great. Wow, it was great. Um, and, you know, RVD has this connection to the crowd that not a, not a lot of wrestlers have. And mm -hmm. they are rabid for him. And they they both hold this crowd in their hand, the whole match. Everybody's standing up. Everybody's, you know, waiting to see what happens next. It's very interesting to watch this crowd during the match. Um, but the moves are the story in this match. Like, everything is so beautifully done, so hard-hitting, so brutal-looking. The fucking... I mean... When he hit the floor, and then he looked a little out of it, my notes say, uh, is is Jerry Lynn okay? Because he looks <laughs> fucked up. And I he was, was like, okay. he I was, was like, that was real. Like, that was real. It took me a minute, and I'm going, yeah. He, he, the fact that after that bump, he continued to work as hard as he did is mm. amazing to me. Because we find out later, you know, it was a huge, <laughs> a huge deal. Um, and he really got hurt. So, um. I can't believe, like, even after that, I can't believe he pulled this match out after that. Um, I mean, just, just amazing shit to watch, like, and, and kind of emotional. Like, I, I felt like Jerry Lynn had a shot, like you said, like, he feels like he could have done it. Maybe if he hadn't have busted his head on the floor on the outside of the <laughs> ring, he right, could have yeah. done it, but... Yeah, it, well, Lynn incredible. feels like one of those classic, you know, uh, Carl Malone and Stockton, um, Ewing at the Knicks, the guys that just like running up against the goat, right? So, like, yes. all yes. these teams that should have won titles, but they ran into Michael Jordan. Yep. Uh, that's where Lynn feels right now. He's like, he's yeah. at the top of his game, he's probably better than everyone else besides RVD, but RVD's in his way with the TV title, right. and he's just like that much better, just, just an inch better. Uh, you know, Barkley, Robinson, Malone, Camp, right? all these guys had amazing careers and should have been world champions, but they just all were in the wrong era. And that's mm -hmm. where it feels like Lynn is right now in ECW. Yep. But look at him putting on a fucking banger of a match. I did four and a quarter stars, Matt. I'm at four and a half. Uh, all time match for ECW. Just unbelievable stuff. The, the moves, the trading back and forth. Uh, Jerry Lynn should have died. Yep. <laughs> During that bump, it looked he, like he, he did for a while there. Did. Yeah. I mean, just unbelievable stuff and rvd like he's at another level right now and i think that's why they didn't do the title switch because i think you know he's at a popularity that few guys have kind of like what you said jenny and i feel like if they have him lose you're kind of risking that like maybe yeah. him not being as popular so i get it but my god and, just an oh god and i was just gonna say unless you're gonna move him up to taz i mean right. there you go but but yeah just an unbelievable match and i think we're at the point again where the TV title is bigger than the world title right now with this yeah. match. We've seen that before, and I think mm -hmm. we're at that point again. Just, yeah, it's it's an incredible Well, it match. feels like they like Robert D so much that, to me, if he's going to move up to Taz, I think he's doing it as TV champion, and it's like a champion-champion right. champion deal. Um, I don't oh, I don't see them having him okay. lose before he gets there if they do it. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah that I can see that, too. But, yeah, unbelievable match. Just incredible moves. So many great moves in this match. Like it's it's hard to keep track of just all the stuff they do, the back and forth stuff. It's it's unreal and it's brutal in a different way than we're mm -hmm. used to seeing in ECW. Like it's yeah. a different type. Like this felt like more real, if that makes more yeah. sense. Like yeah, just, it was less. It wasn't like just like fake wrestling fighting. <laughs> it's just, no. Right. It was just they're really just beating the shit. Everything was heavy. You know. Yeah. Right. It just stiff as hell and God, just fantastic. All time match for ECW. For me, this is probably like a top five match in company history, I would think. So I'm at uh, four and a half. All right. All right. Backstage, the Dudleys are stewing. They're ranting about Taz's comments and they vow that tonight will be different because Taz can't be one or beat one or two of them. They will have uh, taken people out before and this will be a pleasure as Taz becomes another notch in their belts and the Dudleys are through being nice guys, which is funny. 
Uh, Big Dick comes in. He's dragging Chris Chetty. Devon slugs him, but Bubba says Taz doesn't care about his cousin anyway, so what's the point? Devon's in pain. It kind of looks like he broke his hand maybe on that punch. So Bubba beats Chetty down more because Devon broke his hand on uh, hitting him in the face. So. Oh, Lord. So it looks like we're definitely headed to some sort of Dudley's Taz showdown tonight. Yeah, poor Chetty. No. Not even Chetty. his own family cares about him. Chetty's <laughs> daddy, you guys. Oh, no. You waited a long time to say that. I had that one in the holster since I watched the pay-per-view. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Joey's in the nest. He says, we are scheduled for a grudge match between Shane Douglas and Justin Credible, but Shane is not in the building and is doubtful he'll ever be back in ECW. So right now there's no opponent, but we're sure someone will come face Mr. Credible. So Jenny, do you want to take a minute and uh, well, <laughs> wax poetic about all Shane? <laughs> I mean, the signs have been here for weeks. You guys mm -hmm. have warned me kind of mm -hmm. that this is going to happen, <laughs> and so I've been preparing for it, but and he, it feels like he said goodbye like at least 12 times <laughs> at this point. So part of my heart hurts because he doesn't get a, a good send off, but he's sort of had it. You know, he did his whole, you know, hanging up the boots and all that shit. So even though he had matches after that, it felt like not. It was like the ghost of Shane uh, in those last couple of matches that we saw. So, mm -hmm. um I've, I miss him already. You know, I, it's a huge, it's a huge spot to fill. Like, he was such a big part of it for so long. And, um, I, he won me over. He won me over. I hated him for years and he won me over. So I, I have a soft spot for him and I miss him already. Well, the funny thing is we're saying like the signs were there. It looked like maybe he was done, but he wasn't like leaving. Um, he ended up, so they had a uh, interpromotional show called Break the Barrier at ECW Arena on May 15th. It was a whole bunch of like local small indie promotions that all came together for a big card. And Douglas was supposed to represent ECW. He had an argument with Heyman and delivered a controversial shoot promo at that show and then quit ECW oh. um, one day before this pay per view. So they, he really oh. left him in the lurch here. Wow. When he walked out. Well, what could uh, have happened? It probably money. I mean, it's I'm sure be money, it was overpaid. Right? Yeah, it's maybe, probably it was, or maybe, like you know, that. yeah, right. So he shows up in WCW on July 19th. Um, so it wasn't like he left here to go there. I mean, he's gone. He's like six weeks right. before he goes there. So he ends up there. He's there to the end. Uh, so he never comes back to ECW because he's in WCW until the end. So this oh. is it. We're not gonna see him again. Um, yeah, I, I mean, he had his little dip out for the WF. He came back hot. Yep. You know, he really got them through that little stretch with the triple threat was was a lot of great stuff. Mm -hmm. I do think there was some untapped potential with him as like the veteran gritty face kind of hanging on against the young guys. Mm -hmm. I think he would, he had actually kind of had a little bit of a rebirth. Um, the injuries clearly piled up, and I'm sure there's yeah, a world where he was fucking yep. hurt. Yep, yeah. I'm sure there was a world where Paul envisioned him being like an announcer, an ambassador when he was done wrestling, like he kind of mm -hmm. did. There were a lot of 98 where he was in the booth um, through most of that year, which, you know, we enjoyed him. We thought he was pretty good at that. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure maybe, maybe Paul's like ready to wind him down. Maybe he was supposed to lose and Douglas, they don't want to lose. Who knows what they fought about. But mm -hmm. um, so that's it. Franchise has been franchised. He's out. And it, we continue Francine. to evolve. You know, what happens to Francine right. now? She gets shoveled well, around to Tommy Dreamer, I guess. It looks like it. Yeah. I think she's yeah. just going to get moved to Tommy. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's kind of sad we don't really get like a final blow off for Shane. I, I don't remember yep. what his last thing on TV was, but it would have been better if like Credible could have beat the shit out of him and like they ran him off that way or something. But no, I'm sure they can retcon it a little bit. All right. Credible and his crew hit the ring. They talk about all his successes. He's beaten great Sasuke, ran the Sandman out of ECW, and he broke Shane Douglas's ankle in his hometown and says, see ya, what it want to be ya, and does a little cross chop. Credible says he's a one-man crime spree. He's guiltier than OJ, and he won't be sent to the chair for it. And, of course, that triggers old Jeff Jones. He comes out with a stretcher, says there may not be a jury system to try Justin Credible, but he is the judge, and he will try him for these crimes. Credible is guilty as charged, and he'll be executed by the man. Out comes Sid to a pop. Joey says he thought we saw the last of Sid. He gets to the ring, dumps Credible to a dodge a charge. Kicks away, throws him over the top of the choke slam. Sid follows out, slings him to the railing. Back in the ring, Credible begs off as Sid kicks him in the gut. He loads a power bomb. Jason comes in to stop him. Sid attacks uh, or attacks Jason. 
He power bombs him. Credible Kane Sid. Sid shrugs that off and choke slams Credible. Loads the power bomb, but Lance Storm is in, and we, we get a DQ, which is you know rare in ECW or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Sid choke slams Storm. Credible stops the power bomb by throwing powder in his eyes. Credible and Storm beat on Sid. They set up a table on the ramp. They put uh Sid on it, but Fonzie and Sabu come out. That gets a big pop. Sabu fights him off while also beating on Sid. Sabu hops to the ring, and he puts Sid through the table with a springboard leg drop as Storm pulls Credible to safety. Security tries to break things up, but Sabu puts one of them on the table bridge and crashes into security with a leg drop before finally dragging off. <laughs> Sid wakes up. He's not happy with Jeff Jones, so he power bombs him twice, and then he heads out. Crowd is loving this, but it did not make Credible look great. Uh, this should have been a big night. I mean, it should have been credible beating Douglas, right? But obviously mm -hmm. they didn't do that. We'll see if Sid stays around. I don't, I'm guessing he doesn't. I think he was already done. I think they paid him to come in yep. uh, to make up for Douglas not being there. It's probably like a last second thing. Maybe they said, hey, you know, can you fly in and do an angle for us? Because the way they kind of have him finally show um, a little bit of softness, uh, something he hasn't shown before. Mm hmm. I think that that to me shows they weren't planning much unless they have some got a Sid Sabu match planned. I don't know, but this is a cool kind of historical moment of what us. A dream match. Interacting. Yeah, right. kind of no. um, so again, it's fine. Credible and storm look strong and that was, or they don't look strong, but they at least come out of it unscathed. And that was kind of the most important part. So a uh, man, when I start a half, it's, it's just Sid, Sid being Sid. Yeah, I mean, they did the best they could given the situation. It was cool they got Sid back for this, but I mean, the match itself, it's like five minutes long, if that. So, I mean, I went a star and a half. Again, the chaos was really good, and like the ending was really good with Sabu putting Sid through the table and all that stuff. But like as a match proper, it wasn't much. So, star and a half for me, Jenny. Yeah, I'm with y'all on the star and a half. Uh, I thought Sabu was banned from wrestling. What's he doing? Why is he... Why is he yeah, he is banned. He should not be here, but that's right. Yeah. He couldn't, he um, couldn't, uh, couldn't take it seeing credible and storm, I guess. But yeah, I, I, it just seemed random to have Sabu <laughs> come out and put this. In <laughs> well, I don't know why they didn't just do Sabu and credible, like, right? Just, why not? just say Douglas isn't here and yep. we convinced the athletic committee to do mm -hmm. a one time. You know, to make up to to offset the crowd having needed refunds or something like whatever. You know, I know right. they probably want to save it. They probably have it booked out already, but um, that could have been one way to salvage a card. I mean, Sid gets a good pop, so it's whatever. But yeah, to yeah. me, it's I'll clear they they've hacked this card together. Once yep. Douglas quit, they had a panic and throw things together. Makes me wonder. You think they were going to close with Douglas Incredible? Maybe then. Maybe that's why they did this. Maybe Taz Candido was always going to open the night. And they were going to end with Taz and, and uh, or Douglas Incredible, and they ended up having to do this instead. I could mm, see that. Maybe. I mean, no matter uh, what, I don't think they saw Candido as like a viable. Concept. No, no, I think I think that's abundantly clear. <laughs> but I, I don't. I I think you're right. I don't think Taz was ending was main eventing the quote unquote main eventing this show. It probably was going to be Shane Credible. That would have made sense. Yeah, that's my thought. It's still weird, though. It is How, still weird, but... Yeah. You, yeah, your champ should be the main event. That's how I feel. Or even RVD Jerry Lynn. Have that go on last. Yeah, yeah that, that could have been great to close to. I don't, maybe, I don't who knows? What the, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I think they realized they had to do something because Candido was weak. Douglas is gone. And I think they realized they were kind of in panic mode. So Yeah. All right. Joey resets the whole night and sets up our new main event. Here we go. Taz is going to take on some form of the Dudley boys. <laughs> Sign guys out with Bubba. Looks like it's going to be him. He's got both tag team titles on his shoulders. Big moment. Pay-per-view main event world title match, it looks like. Bubba says this is his church. He's laser focused as the crowd is buzzing. Bubba grabs the mic and says, Devon was supposed to come out and take the world title, but he broke his hand attacking Chetty. Mm. And Bubba says he will be the next world champion. Very long, drawn-out promo. Just filling yes. time. doesn't yep. say much. So again, you could tell they're filling. I don't know how long D Douglas and Credible is supposed to fucking go, but it feels like they've had to fill <laughs> so much. Well, um, so Shane is 15 minutes easy. Yeah. Well, I feel like we filled more than 15 here. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I can think of is maybe Candido, maybe they were going to close with that, and maybe he was hurt again or something. Something and they happened. And they had to do a squash and then rebook this because it feels mm -hmm. like we're filling time left and right. Like yeah. all the Dudley's attacks in the back, the earlier Dudley's promo, this Bubba promo, all the Sid stuff. Like, that's got to yeah. be filling a gap somewhere that's more than just Shane versus Credible. So, yeah. 
All right. Out comes Taz finally. Slides it. He kicks Bubba right in the side of the head. Taz takes over the fireman's carry suplex. Bubba bails out to recover. Taz gets the mic. He says, this is now fuck the world rules and false count anywhere. Bubba returns. He clubs at Taz, grounds him with some strikes. Bubba shoots Taz to the ramp and follows the punches. Takes Bubba down with a drop toe hold. Grabs a giant FTW stop sign from a fan. He cracks Bubba with it. Stumbles into the ring. Taz chucks Bubba right back out. He flops into the timekeeper table. Taz drags him through the crowd. He peppers him with punches. Bubba hammers back and busts Taz open. They fight into the concourse and then back to the crowd, just all walk brawling. Back in the ring, Bubba keeps punching at the cut. Taz is bleeding heavily. Bubba goes to the middle rope. Taz blocks and takes off with a head and arm suplex. Devon shows up. His hand is all taped up. He gets a soft drop, but Taz uh, kicks out at two. Bubba gets an avalanche in the corner. Taz pops out with a stiff clothesline. Bubba shakes it off, gets a side slam for two. Sets up a table in the corner, continues to punch at the cut. Taz fires up. We get a big slugfest. The ref tries to step between, but Bubba and Taz uh, grab him and chuck him through the table. Bubba gets a powerbomb for two as a new ref comes out. Bubba gets a back suplex for two. Taz pops up, takes out Devon, puts Bubba through the table with a head and arm, and then quickly hooks a Taz mission, and Bubba taps out. Taz stands tall as the Dudleys head out, and we wrap up the recap video to close out the show. So, I mean, this is kind of whatever. There was not much heat, no real concern that Taz was going to lose. I will say the blood kind of helped make you think like, oh, all right, maybe the Dudleys will double up. We did see them beat RVD, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess it's not crazy that they could beat Taz. Mm -hmm. um, it was just kind of a walk brawl. Uh, I thought the punches were pretty good into the cut, uh, but the back end heated up a little bit. Again, Taz is in a weird spot. We just had a major pay-per-view. No feud, no threat, full meandering. We just need something that's personal for him that doesn't include Sebu. That's all we got. I mean, Douglas mm -hmm. is gone. You know, we're probably not going to get Dreamer because he's still with Storm Incredible. Uh, RVD and Sabu are tied up now. Like, what do we got? So we'll see where it goes. Uh, fine enough for Bubba. He's never a true threat. Felt more like an arena fair, mm -hmm. you know, Cyber Slam yeah. weekend type of show <laughs> match. Uh, so two and a half, Jenny. Um, I'd say pay Raven to come back, but I think he was actually kind of reheated back in WCW, wasn't he, Matt? Mm -hmm. Here in, in yeah. Spring of 99. Yeah. So I don't just... know who's even out there. No, right. <laughs> Oh, but. remember the Raven days? Those are really good. Mm. I mean, th there's a world, Matt. You hinted at it earlier. Like, why not do some kind of like foreign invasion stable with with Tajiri, Taka, and Crazy, and just right. heat them up as like buzz saws and kick the shit out of people, and then they swarm Taz. Maybe that's at least something fresh, right? So we'll right. see if anything happens with that. So uh, two and a half, Jenny, though, on this uh, de facto main event. Yeah, I did two and a half as well. Um, I, I I like a congestion stand uh, hit, so I I kind of I didn't mind it. It felt very kind of classic ECW crowd brawl, walk brawl, um, with lots of blood. Uh, I like the FTW sign usage in the match. I like the brawling on the um, uh, out on the ramp as well. So I mean, it's it's kind of the it's like what the Dudleys can do, right? Mixed with mm -hmm. what Taz can do, which is suplexes. Um, yeah, kind of a disappointing main event. And with some cool spots, not going to lie, some of that, I didn't mind some of it. So um, two and a half, Matt. Yeah, I went two and a quarter on this. This is a weird one. I mean... It Bubba Ray Dudley getting a pay-per-view main event, just super weird, a thing you wouldn't expect in 1999. It's just, I feel like it was more of a Bubba Ray Dudley match than a Taz match too. Yes. Yeah. Which I don't think really helped it in my opinion. Like Taz, I think I've said this before. Taz is like, he's okay at a walking brawl, but it's not his strength. Like, no. and, and it's kind of Bubba's strength. So you're in this weird situation where you've got to kind of play both hands. So, and I don't think it really helped either one of them by doing that. So it's just, it's a weird main event. The blood did help, like you said, but yeah, the at least made title. it seem like maybe he's caught. Right. So there's a chance. I mean, they could have done a handicap match to make it feel a little bit more mm -hmm. like they did with Dudley's and RVD. Um, but I don't know if you want Taz to beat both Dudley's right now with where they're at. Right. So it's yeah. it's kind of it's tricky. Yeah, it's um, a weird one. Plus, Devon's hand was broken. So right, uh, no, it's naturally. So right, all right. So that'll do it. Just kind of odd pay per view all around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, best match show was like we talked about. I mean, Matt, you have it as one of the best in company history. I would say no, it's your best of the night. That's yeah. RVD and Jerry Lynn for yeah. sure. 
I, I went Taz Candido for worse. I mean, uh, it's probably Sid credible, I guess, for real, but uh, yeah, that's yeah. I put Taz Candido because it was morally disappointing that yeah. that's our world title match. Uh, best moment, I went Sid. His return, I mean, he gets a massive pop, and then Sabu's carnage right after it was mm. was a cool one too. Yeah, that was awesome. Yep. Not a lot of um, big moments in this show. No, no, no. it's a weird show. It's yeah. like it is. It is a weird one. It's like they put so much effort getting to these pay per views, and then all this shit goes wrong, and they just gotta figure it out. You know, uh, um, yeah. Jerry Lynn, um, kind of kicking out of the first five star frog splash mm -hmm. really good yeah. during that match. For moments. All right, most 90s. I'm with the kind of the wild ECW format pay per view all over the place. <clears throat> and then um, Cyrus's obsession with heat and all that yeah. stuff, creative control and booking committee oh. and yep. yeah, playing the insider. Uh, rising, I did like it though. I went Cyrus on the start on the rising. Super crazy, Landstorm, Dreamer, Lynn, RVD, Dudley's Taz, Hebu, Mama. everyone. Yep, the usual suspects. Uh, falling Candido and Tammy, who are just done. Shane Douglas oh, yeah. done. Chetty looked like a bitch. Poor Victory and Price. <laughs> yeah. Didn't look great. Yep. Uh, yep. The commentary yep. audio we talked about was bad. Night too. Yeah. Gertner's face fell off of him. So, with yeah. the fireball. Yeah, that's so. right. Fireball. So, all that said, I'm still going to go seven out of 10. Um, it's, still a, it's still a good ECW pay per view. It's like still better than a lot of other ways to spend two and a half hours. RVD Lynn is awesome. Um, you know, to Jerry, that match was really good. Uh, I liked to, to Taka and Crazy was really good. Um, I thought the Dudley skits were funny, so I think it, it, it's almost a show in a vacuum that probably holds up better. Like, if you were to put this on randomly, not going through the history of ECW, I bet it holds up pretty well. Mm -hmm. I think for us who've kind of been living the week to week and getting invested in things, and then suddenly the rug gets pulled out on a lot of these, and you kind of wonder where we're going next, I think hurts a little bit more. But if yeah. you're someone that's just throwing this on like 20 years later or whatever, and you're like, oh, Taz Bubba, that's cool, right? Like, it's probably a little less um, annoying, I guess. It's just a cool ECW right. show, so. But you are watching it as part of this. And I still liked it. I, I mean, I think it had potential. Every ECW pay-per-view to me has potential to be, like, nine plus. So a seven is, like, low. It's like it's like a Royal Rumble to me, right? Like, right. I go into a Rumble expecting it to be four plus. So mm -hmm. if it's not, it's still good. Three and a half star match, but it's, <laughs> it's bad for a Rumble. So I would argue seven is very low for an ECW pay-per-view. Um, but it's it's still a very good wrestling show. Okay. I don't know. I'm doing six and a half. Yeah, I ended up doing seven too. The world title stuff is a mess, but there's enough good in the middle, match quality wise, that I think carries it. But the world title picture right now is Too just a disaster. Stuff. Yeah. Well, it's short too, right? I'm not going to get to the whole like bloated era Dota E argument, but it's just something to saying. I'd rather watch a two and a half hour show that's like this with some annoyances than like a four and a half hour show that might have some better matches, but it's just like fucking interminable, right? So, like, at least this moves. So, like, it was, it was easy to watch. So, mm -hmm. well, hopefully, this was easy to watch and listen to as well. We're done with another episode of Extreme Three Way Dance here. Another pay per views in the books. We're going to be back in two weeks. We'll have three weeks of television. And uh, we'll be marching on to our next pay-per-view, which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe will be Heat Wave. Mm -hmm. But we got a lot of TV in between. Uh, we got three, six, nine. Damn girl, fine. Thank you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. To the window. <laughs> to the wall. Till the... Sweat drops down my balls. Thank you. All right. We are done. Talk to you in two weeks. Subscribe. Spread the love. Stay extreme. Thank you. <laughs>